Think about all the things that persona grip can go on. There's no way I can possibly know that, but that's where you come in. You can actually help change the world and the way people start interfacing with the things they hold by sharing ideas with video on the internet. Check it out. Get whatever hand grip position you want. Well, an enterprising man named Ed Dellis has come up with a new steering wheel idea. They always say, you can't reinvent the wheel. Well, guess what? I did. And you have to grip the wheel literally half as hard as you would normally to get the same effort. It's a much, much improved way, and some of the NASCAR drivers here are using it, and of course a lot of the IndyCar drivers use it as well. As a race car driver, I know that the most important thing is to feel the limit. Uh, what the drivers are able to do is to relax their grip, and with a relaxed grip, they're better able to read the feedback through the wheel, and that's very critical for taking the car to the limit. Hey everyone, I'm Ed Dallas, steering wheel guy. And I'm here to generate some revenue to make some injection mold tooling to produce these steering wheel grips so these guys out there can get started properly and stop hurting themselves. And the money this generates will be used to train industrial ergonomists on how to manipulate plastic on tools for assembly line workers exposed to both high repetition and high grip force to help reduce the risk for carpal tunnel syndrome tenfold. This is according to NIOSH research in 1987. And of course, the reason why that's important is because our out of control healthcare costs are sending jobs overseas. And we now have a little bit of American ingenuity that can help put people to work out there modifying these tools to help bring jobs back to America. I invented Persona Grip back in the mid 80s before the world's premier ergonomic society wasn't even around. In fact, if you use the word ergonomics, people thought you were mispronouncing economics. I mean, the word was that new in the public's eye. Now, you know, the engineers and the industrial ergonomists, they know how to design tools for the task, but they have to design tools for every possible misuse and use of the tool. And this is under strict liability, product liability. This is what they're forced to do. So what you end up with is a very smooth generic surface that relies purely on friction in order to control it. And that's the most inefficient way of trying to control something. Not so when you can send a technician in on the assembly line and watch that tool being used. Two patents later, I teamed up with Mike Ray who goes on to win the world championship in racquetball using a grip that we designed together. And it's won gold in Beijing and for the Olympics and it's won the Indy 500 several times. But here's where things got a little bit tricky. Within a year and a half, I had two thirds of these guys buying this off me. They just knew it felt better. But as a driving instructor, I knew the reason why it felt better was because they were able to ride a little bit closer to the edges of the friction circle. It's a whole new video series plan that'll explain that. But really, it, it represented a paradigm shift. And I, at the time, really didn't even realize that until I went to NIOSH when they tested it on a Lido work simulator using standard university test procedures. The guy actually stopped me in the hall, spun me around, said, you need to get this out into industry. So, okay, fine, I'm thinking I need to make some money, right? No, the reason why is because it changes the way we actually think about trying to control something. He called it a paradigm shift. And that's really what we have on our hand. The foundation for the original paradigm starts when we first come right out of the womb. Ever since we're babies, you know, we begin to associate increased grip tension with more control. So when I showed up on the IndyCar scene and I asked these guys to relax their grip so they could feel the top of the Mew slip curve better, to have more control, come on. They knew, all they knew is that it felt better. The teams, they thought I was just trying to make their driver more comfortable. There was a lot more to it than that. Okay, as ridiculous as that sounds, let me show you how that relates to the steering wheel. Steering wheels come wrapped in leather, and if I take this off and set this here and ask you to move it, are you gonna push down to slide it? No, that force is perpendicular to the direction that you want it to move. Instead, you'll just push it like that. Now, if we wrap this leather back onto the steering wheel, we can see that the pushing down, since this is wrapped all the way around, is the equivalent of squeezing. So as ridiculous as it was there to say, hey, Let's hover our hand over there and move it. If I hover my hand and loosen my grip there, it's not gonna move. When you can build up wings, flutes, and flanges all on the wheel, and you're literally like a gear attached to this thing. Now you can relax your grip and move it, and you're ending up with a more pure coupling against the force you're trying to move. And of course, that force is the feedback. 
uh, that you're getting through the steering wheel. And that is directly proportional to the amount of traction you have. And so what you've really done is you've improved the signal to noise ratio. And that is why these steering wheels work. Now to complicate matters further, there's no word of mouth in racing. Think about it. If you're out there and you discover something that's going to help you get to the finish line sooner, are you going to run around the pits telling everybody, hey man, check this out, this stuff will help you beat me better. No way. In fact, it's the exact opposite. You'll go around and tell everybody, hey man, I wouldn't use that. Those things stink. I wouldn't waste your money. But what they didn't notice was they had one set for ovals and one set for road racing. Yeah, they bought two of each just to have one for a backup. Do the math. These things are like night and day compared to a regular steering wheel. And I think the proof is in the pudding. I've done 757 serial numbered steering wheel grips and they're still buying. There's a reason for that. Look, if you do anything with your hands, you can benefit from this technology. You're only limited by your imagination. If you can think of it, you can create it and you can share it online. So everybody across the globe can benefit. This stuff can be used for anything. This is my shift knob here. But whether it's a shifter, a set of toenail clippers, whatever, it can help. Give it a shot. So for your chosen endeavor to change the paradigm, here's the attitude. Tell me what I need to know that I don't even know to ask. Once we get this paradigm shift well under where people are starting to understand what the benefits are of leveraging versus friction, you'll be able to run down to that hardware store and buy a roll of this and live in your own little molded world. Let's get started. So help me help you reinvent your wheel.